Hello and welcome everybody to today's masterclass where I'm here with the talented young students of the Australian Youth Orchestra. Now I've had the privilege of working together for them for the, this past week, the Sibelius Violin Concerto with conductor Simone Young. And uh, it's been a really great time working on them, with them in a group basis. And now tonight, I have the privilege to work together with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So tonight you will hear three talented students, violinists, who will be playing various repertoire. First we have Iona from Brisbane, who will be playing Elgar's Violin Sonata, The First Movement. Please welcome Iona.
really great job, I have to say. Um, this is actually a new sonata for me as well. And uh, thanks to you, to for, th thank you for introducing me to it, actually. And uh, because it's really a lovely, lovely piece. And um, I have to say that you play it really well. Your intonation is quite good. And there's some parts that maybe we could do a little bit of work on. Um, how do you feel when you play? Uh, is, is it a, bit, um, a little bit nervous? Yeah. A, a, a little bit nervous? <laughs> yeah. Couldn't be because there are cameras around and no. everything. No, <laughs> that the anyone in the world could be watching us right now. <laughs> no. Um, so you know, I have to say, I, I I completely understand. I hate cameras as well, especially you know the thought always creeps in my mind. But you know, just then after the performance, I always say, oh man, I wish I had a second chance. So here's your second chance. Why don't you try at the beginning again? And this time, you know, just, it's okay. You've already done it before. It's fine. You have this. You got this. You got this. All right. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. So your sound, when you want it to, you know, get out there, it does. But then other parts, I sometimes I lose you a little bit, or it sometimes it becomes like a little bit, you know, you know, you shy back in or something like that. Um, I want you to just think about. You have to remember, you're always going to be performing for a, a much larger space, even larger than this, you know. So think about that and you know, have that in mind, that it should reach the last person in the hall. Uh, so when you play, especially, you know, this, this first section, it's quite, shall we say, meat and potatoes kind of thing. It's like... I mean, you know, you need to gain, like, at least 30 kilos, and then, you know, you come out, and then you just play this, you know, kind of like... You look like Brahms and you play this, so you also need to grow a beard as well. Um, but, I mean, you know, this is really heavy stuff. Um, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's also, it says resol resolute, with resolution, right? So when you come out and... And this is the first... But this is more... And then you unleash here. Right? So have that in mind that you're going to, you're aiming, you have a certain plan, right? With, with everything, we should always, always have a game plan about how we, you know, how the piece is structured, how we want to phrase, how we want to, it's, I mean, I don't mean to plan out every single note, but you do need a certain plan, or at least maybe one or two different plans that you can have options for in the moment, however you feel. And then as you get more and more familiar with the piece, uh, you have more and more options, and then you can, but there are always these options, right? It's never just, oh, you know, it's, I mean, very seldomly do I ever think that I'm gonna do something that I've never practiced before in the practice room, right? That's why we practice. So. So you, you, you should think about how you want to phrase this. And um, yeah, try, try that again. And uh, remember here, more. So that you build towards this, right? tell you about how sound is produced. Okay, so sound for me is three things. First one is bow speed. Second thing is bow 
So we say weight. Third thing is the location, right? Yep. So I think you've got the speed and the weight pretty good, but your sounding point location is a little, you know, could be a little closer to the bridge. Oh. All right, just a little bit, a fraction. And, you know, how close you go to the bridge, that really, I mean, a hair's breadth can make a huge difference. So we don't want it scratchy, but I think it's a little loose right now. You could, the sound is a little bit blah, 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 blah. So it could be a little tighter. So let's try that. But not on the chord. Just, so when you play, it's, it's, I never, you never really crunch on the chord. You kind of, you have to dive into that water. It's, it's hard on the surface, right? When you dive into the strings. And it also depends which note you're playing. The higher up it goes, uh, as you are on the fingerboard, the closer you can be to the bridge, right? So, I mean, just a, a tiny bit. So, cut the difference and, and, and try again. Okay, and here, remember, this is the, the, you have to, if you have to crescendo, you have to give yourself space, right? So, that was... Can you go louder beyond that? Maybe not so much, right? So remember, da 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 and da 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 da. Right? Okay. to the bridge, just on, at least on the sport sound though, right? It's that, that's the importance. Yeah, ba 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 Okay? Right there. And try a bit more by speed as well. If it, if it, so you, you know, you can use a combination of the three. It's like combining colors. Those are your three primary colors for sound. Okay, so try a variety of them. No, so no, that doesn't work. But it's, at least you tried. So then you think maybe, okay, maybe the location is... Also, I find that violins, if, you, um, if, you're not, if they're not used to being played close to the bridge, they, it's hard to initially do it. But you can train them to kind of take a beating, so to speak. <laughs> Um, so if you, right, so you can slowly, slowly just, I would practice, this is what I do, so slow scales, slow scales, and being as close to the bridge as you can with still a nice sound. Yeah. So slow down the bow. And try that. And then that's, and it'll, also, it'll get you used to that. Alright, so, because a string, it's like, you, you play it, it's the individual, you feel the individual, you should feel the individual hair, uh, the little follicles of your bow, kind of gripping that string and feeling it oscillating. So, you really need to, to be really sensitive towards that and know the limits of your instrument and what it can and what it can't do, yep. right? But you also need to push it to the edge too and to be able to know how to push it to the edge. So that's very important. So right there, um, again, at one. Tip that you can do when you play on the E string, 
turn your violin over a bit because that way you'll get the angle of the bow on the string, the proper angle. Because if you're doing this, where does the alignment go? It go and kind of goes, you're try, trying to push sideways. But if you turn your instrument around, notice when I'm, when I'm playing, when sometimes I, you know, sometimes if you see other players too, they go like, they're like, you know, they're doing this, you know, a little bit of this, and you're, you're like, wow, that back. That back though. You know, and it's like, what? Uh, but that there's a reason why, which is to try and get that, that angle of that. So turn your violin a little bit more. So, sh yeah, come on, show, show me that back. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and now, now try it. Now try that, try that part, number two. Rep more. Just, 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 you know, do, do the limbo a little bit more. Okay. So you notice how on the G string it's always really, it's, it's the right angle because of your shoulder rest. So you, when you play the E string, it'll, it, it'll help it as well. It'll help the sound get out there. So, um, yep, right, continue, right at three. This is like a softer part, right? I feel that, you, you, you know, that's the sound you want to make. But remember, just because it's softer doesn't mean you have to stop singing. So when you, you know... Don't, it's like that, remember the three rules of that sound, the three different uh, things you have to think about. When your bow gets a bit slow and then you're in the wrong part and then, you know, it's kind of, it kind of drags the sound, it stops singing, the instrument stops singing. So make sure you don't kind of go below that speed limit or whatever it is, you know, that limit. Uh, just like there's an upper limit, there's also a lower limit too. All right, so right there at three again. play like this it's like a damper sound it's 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 the sound is dampened so make sure you always uh, right to do that um, just start with So in this section, just what are you, what are you thinking about? What, what does this mean to you? Um, sort of a bit like a harp. A harp. Yeah. So sort of a bit like a harp. But I mean, what kind of mood is it? Like peaceful. Peaceful. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of think of like, you know, that movie Up? 
uh, where they where they like when he thinks about his past. And you know that really that's like the saddest first five minutes of any movie you'll ever see. And it's just like when they're like having like a great time and they're all together and it's just like um, that's not rushed you, so you want to have that kind of frame of mind that really I mean tranquilo reflective is the word I would use so and when you play the long notes don't get too aggravated okay and just keep that really smooth sound going okay sounds a little bit wobbly, like you're driving a car and you're just steering too far to the right, too far to the left. So don't autocorrect. Like, try to keep it smooth, okay? I know you want to play around with it, but think of playing around with it not note to note individually, but rather in groups. So it's one, two, three, four, 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 right? It's like that. is the melody so right so use a little more bow make sure your bow is like your paintbrush you're the artist and so just make sure that you've got that smooth brush going okay and so this I mean the piece it's basically the same, but just, you know, with added re recapitulation, it comes again at 14. So with this being said, the stuff we're, we're saying here, you can work on that later. All right, let's skip quickly. We've got one more minute to 11, uh, big number 11. Okay, so that's pretty... Right, so try, you, you play that. <laughs> right there at 11, go on. So think about, think about it like this. You, you press down, right? But think about your violin pressing up. That way you suddenly, it's like, it won't be as kind of, like, and then you, you suddenly, it'll free it up. Try it, try it. Wow, that was really great. So let's just finish with that. Thank you so much. Thank you.